Hey, what's going on? Ellis Williams here, cleveland.com. Got another instant analysis video breakdown for y'all. This time, the number 115th pick, Harrison Bryant, a tight end out of Florida Atlantic. On day two, the Browns went all defense, but with the first pick in the fourth round for the Browns, Kevin Stefanski addresses the offense, adding a tight end, who I'll be honest, I pegged Harrison as a guy who wouldn't fit Stefanski's system heading into the draft for two reasons. First, his size. I like his height at 6'5", but at just 240, he's, he's not ready to block defensive linemen at the NFL level. And when you have tight ends that are really just pass catchers, it tips your hand as an offense. Defenses know this young man will come on the field and that it's likely going to be a pass. So to me, that doesn't scream with the variance that Stefanski wants to play with. But still, they make the pick, assuming this young man can probably put some size on him. Uh, Austin Hooper weighs about 260, George Kittle 250, Zach Ertz 250. So this young man puts 10 pounds on him, and well, he, he's, he fights hard in the run game. He just doesn't have the size to do it. So it's not that he can't. It's just a size thing. The second reason were drops. He had eight drops in 2019. That was really high and out of character for him, and that just becomes worrisome. But over his first three years, he only had three. So for the drops and the lack of size, I just pegged him as a guy who wouldn't work. But going back and watching the tape, assuming he adds some of that weight, I was wrong about his hands. This young man can catch the football, and he's versatile. He can line up all over the field, and I'm going to show you that first. So let's go to the tape. All right, so this is FAU versus Ohio State. Don't pay attention to the score. It gets out of hand as we're going to go through this. And any of you Buckeye fans out there who double as Browns fans, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Nothing to watch here necessarily in terms of him getting the football, but I just want to show you how he's deployed all over the formation. He's split out wide a lot. He's flexed, and he does come in tight. So, again, that tells me that he was protected from having to have a lot of run-blocking responsibilities. But if you want to spin it and make it a positive, Kevin Stefanski has, can have, find a lot of ways to use this young man as a fullback, H-back, classic tight end. He's a versatile player, and he won't be asked to be the number one tight end or the focal point of an offense in the NFL. So he's a great complementary piece. Let's just watch how – FAU uses him all over the formation here. Here he's out split out wide, and Harrison talked about not having a good start to this Ohio State game. He had some drops. Here he's flexed as a slot receiver, you know, blocking a cornerback. He, he, he's sliding all over the formation here, again, flexed. And then I think we got one more coming up here that shows him in tight. Again, just wanted to show you all. See, there he is, in tight, classic Y formation there, right off the no one outside of him. He can line up everywhere. And to me, I'll use this as a positive because Kevin Stefanski is going to find ways to make this young man be open and scheme up ways. He had a lot of that at FAU. Is he ever going to be a number one tight end? I never say never, but that's not what he's going to be asked to be right away in his career. Let's watch a few specific plays. This first one, he's flex Y slot receiver here. And what I like about this play, we're about to watch an RPO. He doesn't really sell anything. You know, he's just kind of standing out there and then he doesn't even make that great of a break inside but it was just enough mirrored with the RPO to get inside of that Ohio State defender. And then he gets his hands on the football and makes a tough catch. Here's the play. And you're going to see a few plays like this where you just, you fall in love with this young man's hands pretty quickly. Uh, you read about it and it's about a lot of drops, but if you actually go and watch the tape, his hands are pretty sure. So here, top of the screen, we got a wide receiver fake screen, Y slant. And though technically this isn't man coverage against the number three overall pick, Jeff Okuda, it still becomes his assignment. He gets passed off. Okuda's going to take him here at the top of the screen. And Harrison just makes a tough catch. That's outside his body. It, that, that doesn't look like a body catch. That was a little outside of him. And he holds on. And look, Okuda even says no catch there. But as you see the play progress, it is a catch. All right. So now here, just showing the variance in which he can be deployed. Right now he's the number two receiver there. And – He's going to move all over the formation. That remains a common theme. We're going to jump ahead here just a one minute to the 411 mark. Here on this play, coming up once you see the formation, we've got double balance look here. But twins, again, he's flexed out wide. And what I like about this play is this is what you want out of your tight end, someone who can expose the seam. Now, the Buckeyes are in a, a cover three, cover one look. I'm going to say it's cover one man coverage, one high safety, because watch how they carry with him down the seam. 
and Harrison just goes up and makes a play on this football. He has a good start and stop. He's good at, after the catch. His 40 time was like 4-7-ish, not what you want to see. He probably is going to break any 60-yard scores or anything, but look how he high points that there. I mean, that's, that's about as tough a catch as you can get. And I think we're going to see another replay of this too, actually. We'll show you where the ball placement was. But look at that. There, he gets outside, sheds, and stacks. Nice spacing here, just a little bit off the hashes, and high points that football and holds on to it. Naturally, we're going to get a replay here. Better look at it. Look at that ball and just high points it. And the defender is right in his helmet, trying to fight that ball out, and he, he doesn't. He holds on there. So for me, I'm going to say this young man can catch the football because of plays like that. And we actually have one more play where he makes one heck of a catch, and you guys will recognize who it's against just to drive this point home of his raw receiving abilities. Run this back right here. All right. So he's at the top of the screen. And just watch how this play unfolds. That's back shoulder jump action against Okuda, the number three overall pick who Browns fans and Ohio State fans are obviously extremely familiar with touted as the best cover corner in this draft. And Harrison just goes up and makes a play. Let's watch it one more time. I, I saw this uh, on the screen and, and it just, it jumps right away at you. The, this is stuff you can't teach. It's feel for the game. It's good ball placement, but really Okuda is respecting him in space right there. And then it's just the bigger man winning. And you put some weight on this young man. You're talking a whole nother asset to his game because I'm going to show you why he needs that weight now. We're going to look at some goal line plays here and nothing to watch specifically. We're going to play this in full time, but it's three goal line plays and they actually end up scoring, but it just shows that he's not the blocker you want him to be yet. So first he's flanked in tight here, traditional double tight look. They even motion the wide receiver in and he reach blocks here and actually does a good job with the angle. Uh, but you can tell he took advantage of not necessarily a blindside block, but the man didn't know he was there. See that? And then he's able to bury in space. And it looks good because you're, you're, you know you're in an advantageous situation, but really he doesn't win the one-on-one -on -one block. Here is you're just going to watch him get pushed back. Again, classic tight look, wide formation, twins left, uh, but no push here. Really, it's a stalemate, and he gets pushed back uh, just a little bit there. See right there? Not much fight. The play goes nowhere. He's not finding work. He's just not that involved in the running game yet. Here, he, in a married uh, tight end look, he's probably the H back. And this Ohio State player dives in and takes Harrison for a ride, and it actually allows FAU to score. But it's not a good look on the blocking front, even though he did his job and uh, his team scores. But, again, just getting moved back there. That's what he's going to have to work on at the next level. But overall, it's a nice pick for the Browns, who I think needed to add another tight end in this group. That includes Austin Hooper, David Njoku, Stephen Carlson, and Farrell Brown. It's going to be a competitive room. I don't know what this means for David Njoku, but if Harrison can come in, be deployed in many different ways, and just be a sure, sound catcher and receiver of the football, I think Browns fans are going to like who they'll have next year and who this tight end could potentially grow into. If you like what you just saw, then don't forget to subscribe to Football Insider. To do so, visit cleveland.com slash browns and click the blue banner at the top of the page. There, you'll get exclusive texts from myself, Mary Kay Cabot, Scott Pasco, and Dan Lobby. And you also get exclusive content like our newsletter every day, which includes an Easter egg that only goes to you guys. And we're going to be doing more draft coverage and breakdowns as this thing winds up. So, again, if you like what you saw, visit cleveland.com slash browns. Click the blue banner. Check it out there.